Summer Porter, Unit 2, The Word, The Agent of Creation, The Word Saves. Our scripture lesson today comes from John chapter 12, verses 44 through 50. Then Jesus cried out and said, He who believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And he who sees me sees him who sent me. I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. Did you know that chapter 12 begins the second half of John's gospel? The first half describes seven sign miracles that demonstrated that Jesus was the Son of God. And Messiah. The second half describes what occurred after and how it led to the crucifixion and resurrection. Find that in John chapter 12, verse 37. That the declaration that Jesus was sent by the Father and given words to speak from the Father does not dispute the doctrine of the Trinity, but confirms the doctrine of the Trinity. The doctrine of the Trinity teaches that God is one being in three persons that have separate duties and resulting rankings. The fact that Jesus is the second person of the Trinity does not make him less than the Father, rather defines their relationship. That a repeated assertion from the aftermath of Jesus' meeting with Nicodemus at the beginning of his ministry is Jesus' statement that he came to save, not to judge. Find that in John 3.17. Even though the Greek word is translated condemn in John 3.17 and judge in John 12.47, it is the same word, differing only in being in the third person in John 3.17 and in the first person in John 12.47. And although many Jewish leaders rejected Jesus, some believed, including Nicodemus. And you'll find that in John 12.42 and John 19.39. That chapter 12 of the Gospel of John is the final section of the Book of Signs. And you'll find that that's John chapter 1, verse 19, through chapter 12, verse 50, in which John the Apostle recounts Jesus' work in and for the world. That chapters 13 through 20 in the Gospel of John are known as the Book of Glory, and is dominated by the theme of Jesus' return to the Father and contains Jesus' last words to the Jews during his public ministry. That in chapter 12, Jesus once again appeals to the unbelieving and obstinate world of humanity to have faith in him and the one who sent him. Jesus functions as that of an ambassador who represents the one who sends him because in Jesus, God is present with his word, his claim, and his promise. And that the purpose of John chapter 12, verses 44 
through 50, our lesson today, is to clarify that Jesus and Jesus only leads to God and that the movement of faith reaches its goal in God. And since Jesus is God's emissary, faith in him is a condition of fellowship with God. Our lesson biblical background. <clears throat> John chapter 11 verse 55 through chapter 12 verse 50 details the events taking place leading up to Jesus' presence in Jerusalem, including the Passover. The people had wondered if Jesus would come to the festival and the Jewish leaders had given instructions to be notified of where Jesus would be in order to arrest Jesus when he came. And you'll find that in John chapter 11 verses 55 through 57. Remember that Jesus had stopped in Bethany on his way to Jerusalem where Mary anointed his feet and he raised Lazarus from the dead. It was after Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead that the crowds assembled and believed in Jesus, and that the Jewish leaders decided to kill Lazarus as well as Jesus. And you'll find that in John chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. The crowds met Jesus with palm branches and hailed him as the king of Israel upon his arrival in Jerusalem. And you'll find that in John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. In the crowd were Greeks who had come to the festival to meet Jesus. And when Jesus heard, he declared that his hour had come. And when he died, a great harvest would follow. As you know, even though Jesus performed many signs and miracles, many of the Jews did not believe in him. And those who did were afraid to confess their belief openly for fear of being banned from the synagogue. You'll find that in John 12, verse 36b through 43. Today's lesson, John 12, 44 through 50, highlights the scriptures that conclude Jesus' final public declaration that he had come as light into the world and those who believe in him would not remain in darkness, and he warned those who reject him of the consequences. John 12 appealed to the Jewish believers who were attracted to Jesus but lacked the courage to commit themselves to him in faithful obedience. John 12 calls attention to the Jews who believed in Jesus but they love the praises of the people more than the praise of God. And in this was their stumbling block. And that's John 12, 43. A note, as it was then, it is still true today. Many people who hear Jesus' message almost come to faith, but refuse to take the final step of believing in the Son of God who came to make humanity whole and complete. Our lesson explained. In verse 44, Jesus' final statement was with the prophetic verb cried out, not as an emotional cry, but with a special sense for an inspired speech, because cried out implies a solemn announcement or formal proclamation. In this passage, Jesus was speaking to no one but to every reader of the gospel. The purpose of Jesus' utterance was to confirm and explain from his own mouth the summary of Jesus' ministry by the writer of the gospel up to that point in time, and to present the reader with the theological issues needed to make his or her own decision about Jesus. In other words, 
verses 44 and 45 explains what it means to believe in him and what it means to disbelieve. This is a decision that every living soul must make at some point because Jesus is preaching to no one but the readers of the gospel. That means us. In verse 46, Jesus is giving his hearers the last chance to escape from darkness by believing in him and his promises that those who respond positively to him shall not remain in darkness because through his actions, very being and teaching, he blessed and challenged people, meaning us as well, with the light of truth. And if you believe in him and accept his teaching, do not stumble about his teaching, do not stumble about in darkness of ignorance, but enjoy the life. And as verse 47 says, the primary purpose of this or of his mission of judgment was not of condemnation, but of salvation. Remember, those who accept Jesus' offer of light and live their lives according to his word come to understand the blessings they have found in Jesus and his light helps true believers to see what truly matters in life and to rearrange their priorities appropriately. In verses 48 and 49, the writer lets us know that Jesus' work is to save and not condemn because people, that refers to us as well, condemn themselves by, by their own actions and failure to receive God's word. And since God the Father has given all judgment to his son, Jesus, the criterion for judgment consists of whether someone receives the son and bears fruit in his works of love. Therefore, as verse 48 tells us, a person's final judgment and eternal destiny is determined by his or her response to Jesus and those who refuse Jesus' offer end up condemning themselves. Therefore, people's response to Jesus carry weight because of his relationship to the Father as his obedient son and perfect representative because as verse 49 reminds us, Jesus does not speak on his own. Rather, Jesus speaks on behalf of the one who sent him and commanded him what to say and speak. As God's spokesperson on earth, Jesus makes an offer of salvation for any and all who will hear him, and that offer is backed up by God the Father. Finally, in verse 50, the words spoken by Jesus at the Father's command are a source of eternal life to those who accept them and though he is the speaker, we should be aware that the words are God's and have been supporting the entire revelatory speech of Jesus to the world and against the world. This verse confirms the message of the prologue in John's gospel that the light has come into the world to free humanity from darkness. John 1 verse 9. As verse 50 reminds us, accepting Jesus as the one sent from God empowers believers to see God, to enter the light, and to embark on eternal life with which is another way of stating the promise made in the prologue to those who received him 
he gave power to become children of God. When one rejects Jesus and his word, one rejects God who sent him and commanded him what word to speak and that word will be the judge on the last day. The obedient one calls out loudly so the world may come to see the light and become co-partners with him in his redeeming work on behalf of humanity. The obedient one is Jesus the Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father. Some concluding thoughts. Most people acknowledge a sense of a higher spiritual power that exceeds our human capabilities. How do we understand the mysteries of the universe, the world, and our lives? Jesus' mission is to save the world so that the world can live in an eternal relationship with his Father, God the Creator. Jesus comes to us as the light of the world. He did not come into the world to condemn, rather he came to save and make humanity whole and complete. Jesus said he came that we might have joy, meaning life, and have it more abundantly. And you'll find that in John 15 verse 11. It was God's love, not his wrath, that sent Jesus into the world to save humanity. Yet Jesus' coming will involve judgment at some point. And why should this be? Because by their attitudes, people show who they really are and therefore judge themselves. If a person finds in Jesus an infinite appeal and attraction, then even though he or she might not ever succeed in making life what it ought to be, the tug of God upon the heart says he or she is moving in the right direction and that he or she has a desire for God even though it might be incomplete. On the other hand, if one finds nothing lovely in Jesus Christ and his or her heart remains completely untouched by his presence, it means that he or she is incapable of being affected by God and therefore is already condemned. Jesus came in love and yet he was also coming in judgment. The opportunity to receive him and the father he represents can only happen on the face of this earth. The time to receive him is now, while there is still time. And for those who do not, every wise thing they have heard and every opportunity to know and accept the truth will in the end be a witness against them. Mark 9.23 says, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. The hymn says, Only believe, only believe, all things are possible, only believe. Do you believe? Seek the light, find life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to faithfully listen to and follow the words of your Son. And we give you thanks this day for Jesus Christ, our light and our truth, who has come in your name. Open our eyes and open our hearts to the truth of who Jesus is and what you have sent him into the world to do. Do not let us miss our opportunity to live our lives according to your will as revealed to us in your son, Jesus. Show us how to make his word 
primary in our lives so that it will transform us. Remove any distractions that prevent us from faithfully obeying your son. Reveal to us how we might live as witnesses to your salvation. In the name of your son, Jesus, amen.